Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Linda Soup Plants for You. What you're looking at right now are my precious little children that... <clears throat> oh, there's a sentimental value, or I should say story, behind it, but... <clears throat> I've talked about that in previous video, so I'm not going to go into that today. What I just wanted to show you was how beautiful the backdrop of the elephant ears are behind them. Um, I believe there's a... I forget the name of it. <laughs> Good Lord. Well, I think you guys know what it is, the red flower back there. I know it, like I know my own name, but I'm drawing a blank. <clears throat> we had some horrific storms here last night. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but I, mean, I need to get back in the house to do that. So I just wanted to show you this. This just did my heart so much good this morning to see this. And I wanted to bring it to you and share it with you. So I'll be right back. All right, and this is my sis's rhombifolia, and <clears throat> I had a request, actually a couple of requests, of uh, people that wanted to see an update. I got a little mess going on here, but I just wanted to show you how beautiful her comeback is. Um, for those of you that have been following her story, you'll, you'll be happy to see that... <laughs> She is just growing like a weed. Just unbelievable. Just wonderful. So yeah, she's doing okay. And I wanted to touch base on this beautiful um, kangaroo paw. This plant had some brown, dark brown tips on the leaves a few months back. And I know, I don't recall who it was, but I remember somebody suggesting that it might be um, sunburn because it's in a southern window. I was pretty sure that it wasn't, that it was from over-fertilizing. <clears throat> and the same thing happened actually to my curly fern. Um, the leaves got this right here. This is from over fertilizing. Hopefully you can see that. It, it doesn't look too good through the camera, but it, it was from, I had put a little bit too much in my gallon jug. <coughs> Excuse me. But because it wasn't near what the directions called for. I didn't bother to dilute it. I just thought, oh, I'll just use it the way it is. Well, that was a huge mistake because I did end up burning the leaves on some of my plants. Well, not a huge mistake. It was a little, a little, a little bit of damage. But I cut that off, and I haven't had any since. Now this plant is in a south window. And as you can see, it's extremely healthy. And I have to apologize again for the backlighting, but I, I there is no other way to get these this plant without holding my ring light in my left hand while I'm filming because this floor space here is so narrow. So please just bear with me on the lighting, folks. I, I really apologize. I know... That can be frustrating when you're trying to see the color of the plant, but this is the best I can do. Um, this leaf right here was flat up against the glass for a while. And this is a south window. And there was no burning, there was no issue, no problem. So I'm pretty sure it was not too bright a light. She's been in this window now for, I believe... It's got to be at least a year and a half, and I haven't had any issues except for that time when I thought I over-fertilized, and I'm pretty sure that is what I did. 
Okay, <clears throat> I have other plants that I want to show you, or I, I'm, other things that I want to show you here today. Um, so I'm not going to do a whole tour here of everything, but I just wanted to highlight a few of things of the things that are going on. My lipstick plant, gorgeous. This is in an east window. Look at all the lipsticks. More down back there. And more down over here. You can see these. And there's more behind here that I can't get at right now, but she is doing very, very well. I'm so excited about her. And then I've got my black pagoda lipstick. And although there are no flowers on her, she has like quadrupled in size in the last two months. She just took off like crazy. So I wanted to bring those to you and, and show you the updates on those. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to pause you for a moment, and I will be right back. Okay. And I know this is kind of a an eclectic video today, but it's okay. Um, okay, so this part of the video is going to be about my cuttings and update. And you are going to see the reveal with me. I have some pots ready because I'm hoping it was a success. Trusting it was. Hopefully it was. Um, my grand grandson-in-law-to-be has taken a, a, a real yearning for uh, the, he, he called it the tree-like stem plants. He likes the, the ones that have the hard wooden stems. He doesn't like the frilly, viney type. <clears throat> so... My granddaughter, who loves the viney type, she has those plants, and I have been sharing um, my succulents and my, um, well, most of them are succulents or cacti with him, and he's, he's getting excited. He's getting into plants, so yay! I love it. It does my heart so much good when I see young people picking up the 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 love of um, growing, whether it's outside gardening or indoor plants, you know, there's just something very wholesome, very healthy, and I mean, let's face it, guys, it's, it's a necessity to life, right? We have to have trees. They provide the oxygen that we breathe on this earth. We have to have plants because, you know, they've all got their own job, if, if you will, in, in the world as far as, you know, the purpose that they're here. And, you know, we've got the bees that pollinate the plants that make our food. And so being into, being a person who wants to promote that is a very healthy um, hobby, if you will, to have. And who knows what it will grow into. My little great-grandson was here a couple of weeks ago, and we, we well, more than a couple of weeks now, but we planted some, uh, I just gave him some petunias and things to put in a pot while he was here, and he really, really enjoyed that. So, <clears throat> and he didn't stop talking about it when he got home. So I let him take, take some of them home, and although he wasn't allowed to keep them in his room, I'm, I guess they're still doing good in, in, the, in the living room, but... Um, it just, I get excited when my kids and grandkids get excited about the plant world. So, okay, enough of that. So these cuttings I actually took from my plants. Oh, this one isn't looking too good, but we'll see. And <clears throat> I wanted to make some plants, not only for my grandson-in-law, but also for my daughter. My daughter one and she really loves the variegated peperomia uh, obtusifolia which is what I have in here so I've already given her one or two cuttings of the actual plant 
and my plant is almost almost bare. There's almost nothing left. So I thought, well, I'm just going to take what the big stem that's left on there and see if I can't get a bunch of new plants going. So that's what this is. But let's start with this one. Um, this is no, I, it wasn't in the in the. This is straight perlite. Oh, it, it's it's really not wet enough, so I'm gonna have to put this in there a little longer and then wet it. Oh, there is one little teeny tiny root on there. See it? So we're gonna stick that back in here. And I have found perlite to be my favorite method of propagating right now. I have, years ago, I used to use nothing but um, vermiculite, and that worked too. But I actually found that the perlite is working even better. And I'm not sure why that is, because the vermiculite is, it's a soft spongy material that absorbs water and it stays wet. But, and I, I may try that again, I don't know. But for now, we're just going to stick these back in there. I have to be more diligent about keeping this, keeping an eye on this and keeping the moisture up. The thing that I'm afraid of is... I keep my house pretty cool and one thing you don't want to do when you're rooting plants is have them grow mold and that's very it's it happens very easily if you overwater and have cold temperatures so uh, there's a fine line there that I have to try and find a happy medium for myself see this one actually started to grow some mold on there And this leaf is wet, so it's it wasn't completely dry. Oh, well, look at that. <laughs> the leaf that's the most damaged has the most roots. But... I'm going to leave that in here and let it keep going until it gets a little bigger root system. And then from here we're just going to transfer it into soil once they get a good a good amount of roots on. Now this has to go. That's rotted. And This is my Ruby Cascade. I thought that I would put these in here and lay them flat and see if I couldn't get the roots to grow horizontally. But that doesn't look like that's working. Not that it can't work, but it's not working for me. So I'm going to take those out and I'm going to put those in water. I have a couple other of those in water. And I have a plant in the living room that's growing like crazy. This year I have had so much growth on my plants, more so than any other year. I just, I just, I'm so excited about that. Okay, now this is my, my teardrop or raindrop peperomia. Uh, this is another plant that he wanted a cutting up. Oh look. Do you see that? Compa roots. So it's working. I'm going to put this back in there. And I also took, oh, let me grab that. It's right here, but it's out of my reach. So. Well, I'll finish this first, okay? This one I can feel. 
if you can can you the tug on here is very strong and this would be why Look at all the roots. This one's going in soil. This one I'm going to leave in here to get a little bit stronger yet. I wouldn't have to, but I don't need her just yet, so that's what I'm going to do. All right. Let me get her out of the way. And let me grab this other one here. This, my friends, is the mother plant. And if you will recall, not too long ago, I took two cuttings. Um, and then I, I stuck them it back in the soil. That's all I did. I don't even think I used rooting powder on them. And I didn't let them callus over. I've never, well, I shouldn't say never, but I almost never let my plants callus over, and I've never had an issue with it. Um, but they do say that that's, it's best to do that because if the end of it is raw and open and you cut it and then stick it in the soil, it has a chance of getting bacteria up inside of it, I guess. I don't know. I don't even know if that's true, but that's what they say. So... If you want to be on the safe side and you take a cutting, let it sit out for a few hours or for a day and then stick it in your potting medium. Um, another good medium that I think is, works well for a lot of people is sphagnum moss. And yes, <coughs> it's probably the fastest method that I've ever used, but I do not like to have to untangle that sphagnum moss from the roots. I, I'm always afraid I'm going to break off the few delicate roots that are on there. And I know many people do it with great success, but it's not a comfortable method for me. And that's not to say I won't ever do it again. I just prefer the perlite, and that's working for me right now. Okay, this is the uh, obtusifolia, I think it's called. No. Ugh. Well, yeah. That's not the name of this, folks, and I and it escapes me right now. But it's also known as the teardrop or raindrop peperomia. So if you if you just look that up, you'll find it. Um, Polybotria. That's what it is. And she is the most beautiful plant. If you like the Pilea uh, peperomioides or peperomioides, peperomioides. Boy, I mispronounced that one for years, so now I'm trying to correct myself. But you all know what I mean, right? And the, the leaves on those are much, much, much more delicate than these. Um, and the stems are more delicate. The whole plant itself is much more delicate than this. So if you like that plant, you like the look of it, this is very, very similar, but it's much easier to grow. It's much more forgiving, and um, it might be a better choice for you. Now, as I said, I took some cuttings. I just cut above the leaf 
wherever there's a, a leaf, there's a node that's called a node. For those of you that don't know that. And you just cut right above that, that node. And it will branch out here. And the top piece I just take and put back in the soil and give it a good watering. Be careful you don't overwater. If you're not sure of yourself, do it in a separate pot because you have to keep the cutting moist or it won't rot. And if you keep this too wet, it will rot. So hopefully that makes sense. I've been able to manage to do it in the same pot, but like I said, if you're inexperienced, you might want to, if you get a plant like this and you want to take cuttings, you might want to start out um, putting those cuttings in a separate pot. All right, so this thing has grown about, I don't know, six inches in the last two to two weeks, two and a half weeks. I've got a, a golden pothos, and I asked my husband the other day about it because I thought I was losing my mind. I said, Paul, is that possible? That plant, I took it from behind my sofa where I had it under that um, super um, grow light, <clears throat> my hydro light that I have over my table behind my sofa. I had that pothos on that table and it started to take off. So I thought, okay, she's going to be okay. I can get her out of there now because she was taking up room that I needed for something else. So I put her back where I had her in the living room originally for years. She was uh, about 13 feet tall and you couldn't even put your arms around her. She was so thick. And when I got thrips, I all but lost her, but that's an old story. So anyway, we, we, I put her back in that same spot, and <clears throat> the part that's in the soil got very full, and then there's one stem growing down, just one, and it's down to the floor. It's about four feet, and it was a, not even a foot long when I put it there. <clears throat> So, if I'm doing my math correctly, it grew three feet in the last couple weeks. I don't know what to say about that. I wouldn't have believed it if I didn't see it for myself. And I said to my hubby, I, you know, I betcha if we sat here and watched it, we could almost see it grow. And he laughed. But, yeah, he's, he's kind of a witness to it. He's been paying attention to my plants, too, so... That's just really weird, isn't it? But anyway, so it's doing good. Yay. And, um, got off track here, but the reason I thought of that is because this plant did the same thing. It grew about this much and just in about a two-week period. And many of my plants are doing this. They're, they're, I think they're just giving it the last hurrah here before uh, the end of the season. And that's wonderful. They're going to fill out and be beautiful plants and keep me smiling through the winter, I hope. <laughs> and I truly hope that they slow down because they're wearing me out. Uh, truly, they're, they're just, it, every time I turn around, something else needs repotting and yeah, so I know some people wish they had that problem. There was a time when I did too, but t this is not the time. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do here and I'm going to let you be a part of this one, is before I open this, I am going to take a snippet from this plant because it's getting so tall and I really don't want it to be real tall yet. I want it to be full. So I am going to I think I'm going to take two snippets. Hmm. I want I am I'm going to take two because I want to give one to my grandson-in-law. You know what? Let's do this first because I need to see how many of these leaves 
Oh, wait a minute. Let me think a second. I'm getting all messed up in my head. Oh, yeah, I have more in there. Okay. This is the same plant. Now, this is the one with the roots, and I'm going to, I want to include that in with the one I'm about to cut. And I need to see if any of these have rooted. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. Yay. Look at that. Look at those roots. So exciting. That's just a half a leaf. Okay, that's from this plant. That's I just took and cut this, turned it upside down, and put it in the soil. You don't want to put the tip in the soil. You want to put the part that you cut in the soil. So, good. We've got one, two. Let's see if there's another one. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe not. It felt like it. It fooled me. Oh. Oh, you know what? This is the one with the stem. Okay? And those are the roots there. Let me shake that off a little bit. That's this part. Okay? That's the top part of the leaf. And the roots grew from the stem. I don't really want to put that in there. I'm hoping this one has roots. Yep, look at, oh wow, look at that. Oh wow, okay, cool. This is wonderful. Oh, it's a good day after all, okay. Oh yeah, I wanted to tell you guys about last night, but let's, let's do this first, okay. All right, so I'm gonna plant all these. I'm gonna put these three in here, and I'm gonna put a snippet from up here. I think first I'm going to take one and again I'm cutting right above a leaf. And this already actually has new growth growing here and growing here. So she's going to be just fine. Now I'm going to stick this in the soil but not with these two leaves because there's not much stem there. And you've got to have I'm sorry, I keep sticking this in your face. I had somebody complain to me about being too close to the camera, and I know I am. I just I have to keep reminding myself, okay, maybe I should put a big sign above my camera. Get out of my face. <laughs> All right, I'm going to cut these leaves. And I'm going to put these back in the perlite. So this is the gift that keeps on giving. And I don't think those are leaves. I think that's a flower starting on top there. So this probably wasn't the best time to do this, but that's okay. Let's hope for the best. All right. <clears throat> um... I'm going to keep that one just in case it doesn't do well. Because this is the mother plant. And of course I'm going to keep her and then I can continue to, to get more babies and give them to my kids and to my family. Oh. Let's put some water in there so it stays where I put it. Crazy. Just watered this. Okay, remember when I said these bamboo sticks work really good for 
port. Now you want to get it down in there and get those nodes covered under the soil. Because that's where the new plant is. That's where the roots are going to form. So. Okay, so that one's done. That'll be for me. And then I'm going to take this. You can see where I have those bamboo sticks in there. Um, barbecue skewers. They're holding this up. At some point, I'm going to have to put a bigger support pole in the middle of this, but for right now, they're doing a good job. All right, and on this one, I am going to cut this thick stem here, and I'm, I don't mind. I, I know. Ooh. Okay, that was hard. That was hard. That was hard to do. I'm feeling a little... My heart's fluttering. Ooh! <laughs> okay. So she looks a little bare right now, doesn't she? But she's going to get full. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay? Please don't fret. Okay. I'm going to cut off these bottom leaves. And because I've had such good luck... Uh, rooting these, I'm just going to root those leaves. Now, I'm going to leave these leaves on here. It's a little bit much. Uh, no, I better take one more off. And the reason for that, my friends, is if you don't, if you leave too many leaves on, then the plant has to um, concentrate on supporting those leaves. When what we want it to do is concentrate on making new roots but I think she'll be okay so we're gonna put her in there she's got one two three nodes at the bottom of this so I'm gonna put that in my starter plant for my grandson-in-law that's a big that's a big mouthful isn't it my granddaughter's fiance he's not my son-in-law yet but I can't wait till he is. He is an awesome man. He is so good with my grandson. He couldn't love him anymore if it was his own child. And uh, that does my heart all good. And my grandson loves him, too. And that's important. Very important. Especially nowadays. Okay. Ooh, I'm going to have a fun. Excuse the shaking. That is uh, caused by nerve damage from my fall. So, for those of you wondering what the heck has gone wrong with her hand, that's that's what it is. I know. It's not fun. Okay. I'm going to make a hole in the in the soil now, and I have to remember to. Get this in front of you guys so you can see what I'm doing. I have a habit of pulling things close to me, and as long as I can see what I'm doing, I I forget that you can't see. And I think you're still not in the right spot, so let me try. Let me see. Oh, now see, when I look at the camera from here, I can see you perfectly well. Okay. I spend a lot of time lining up that camera every time I do a video. 
And sometimes it comes out good and sometimes it doesn't, so. All right. Well, it was good till you pulled it out of there again, Linda. Okay. My goodness. All right. <clears throat> this is going to go in the middle, but I think before I do that, I'm going to put these three in the sides, okay? Because I think that would be the best. Oh, I am very excited about the success of this. Now you have to be careful not to bury it too far because it will rot. Especially in the soil. Remember, the perlite is more of an airy mixture, and even when it's really wet, it's still not, it's porous. So it's not the same as when you put it in soil. So be careful with that. Now I guess I'm only going to have room for two, so that's okay. I'm going to put these, the two with the most roots on. Just ever so slightly into the soil. Don't want to. You don't want to put that in too far. And you also don't want it to fall over and lay in the soil because then it will rot for sure. Now I'm going to have to be very careful when I water this because as soon as I put the watering spout in there, it's going to probably knock those leaves over. So that's the, the hard part. And I'm going to put this, the big stem from the mother plant, right down the middle. So while the other two cuttings are <clears throat> are growing, well, maybe I should have put her in first. Come on, hands, cooperate. I'm going to cut just a little bit more off the bottom of there because I want this to sit down a little bit deeper. Okay, that's better. I ordered two plants from um, Gabriella Plants yesterday and I cannot remember what one of them is. Isn't that something? Ugh. Okay. Now let's get this other one back in there. Last night, yesterday, well actually They've been talking about these storms for days that were going to hit our state. We, we hit record temps of uh, upper 90s and in some cases higher, but it went on for five or six days and, and they said it was a record for our state. So, you know, I don't know if it was or not, but it, it sure seemed like it was a lot longer than five or six days. but. Um, not only was it extremely hot, but the dew point was just about as high as it gets. It was in the 70s. That's like 100% humidity, folks. That's, that's like being in a sauna. Um, and yesterday, they, they were warning us about the P 
pending storms because of the cold front coming down from uh, Minnesota, Canada, that area. Well, so my husband and I, yes, last night, no, I guess I should start by saying very often we get these crazy warnings and nothing happens. So after a while you don't get as serious about pre preparing for those storms and that's usually when you get caught off guard and yesterday that was one of those days I thought ah we're not going to get it well when I looked at all the different channels our stations on the television everyone I, I turned on had the state of Wisconsin and it was from it was from all the way from the east coast to the west coast of the state and it was starting at the north end and heading down towards us in the south and they, the one weatherman, I actually had to turn the channel because he had my heart pounding like crazy because he was so excited and, and into what he was telling us. So I turned on a different channel that where the guy was a little calmer, and um, I was listening to him, and I, I got to tell you, I was a little bit nervous. And, you know, my husband and I, when we were younger, we used to storm chase. We loved it. I've never, ever been afraid of lightning, thunder, wind, tornadoes, ever. And, I mean, we've been in them, we've been close to them, and, and they've never scared me. But about a month ago, we had something come out of nowhere. It wasn't even on the news or the weather, or my phone, for that matter. And my husband wasn't here. And we don't have a basement. And all of a sudden the sky got really black. And when those trees started going, I could hear a tornado. I was in my house with nowhere to go. And very difficult to move with the walker. You can't go too fast. I, 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 well, I didn't know what to do. And for the first time in my life... I felt vulnerable, and I, and I was scared. And just at that moment, he called me. He was at a friend's house helping him with something, and he could see from where he was. He was up way higher than where we live. And he could see the sky, and he said, Are you okay? I said, um, I don't know. I, I, think, I think we're having a tornado. Oh, my God. He, so he got in his car and came home and said to his friend, I got to go. I got to go help my wife. Well, by the time here, obviously, by the time he got here, it was over. But I was scared. I grabbed my purse, my medicine, and I was about to head for the interior closet of my house because it's in the middle of the house and it's surrounded by a lot of, um, you know, wall and structure. So I thought, well, you know, if it's my t t time to go, it's my time, but at least I'll be out of the, the away from the glass and and what have you so I was just about to get in there when he came in and he's he, he's grabbing my hand he said we got to get under the back porch I said I, I couldn't get under there if my life depended on it what do you mean get under the back porch how, how am I going to do that and just as that was happening it started to calm down and, and so things were okay that's the, the line of the shirt. We did find out the next day that a tornado did, in fact, go with, with, down through our town um, and near our across one part of our lake and then down our road. It didn't quite make it to my house, but it was very close. So yesterday when this happened, I thought, you know, I probably should go and get those plants down. So... I took my hanging plants down. I took the stuff off the shelves. <clears throat> I didn't want it blowing around in the wind. Well, good thing I did because we ended up, it was, I was watching the storm all night. I couldn't sleep because I knew it was coming. And my husband had to get up at 3.30 in the morning. So I was, I was, you know, nervous for him because I wanted him to get asleep. Well, he sleeps like a log anyway. And he was sound asleep. And I was just about to close my eyes. I had the TV on, but the sound on. All of a sudden, I get this alert on my phone. And then he leaves his phone out in the living room. So his phone went off. And both of them said, take cover now, tornado, 
tornado's been spotted in Wind Lake or something to that effect. And I thought, oh my gosh. So I got up, I went and got him up. I said that they're, they're saying there's a tornado right here. And <laughs> he, poor guy, you know, out of a dead sleep. Well, he jumped out of bed, threw his clothes on. I said, I'm not sure what to do here. And he wasn't saying anything. But he said he could feel the pressure from the tornado. The, the, and I know what he's talking about. And it's a, it's a pressure like you get when you're underwater and you you get pressure in your ears. That That's how close it was. And the next morning we did find out that after the TV told us that we were in the clear, we just had to be careful of the straight line winds, which, by the way, were uh, clocked at up to 104 miles per hour. So... I still wasn't relaxed, and they kept telling us, just because it's not a tornado doesn't mean it can't knock your house down. So, uh, we were sitting here, I grabbed my purse um, and my medicine, and I shoved it in my in my uh, purse, and I hung on to that, sat on the couch with it, and um, waited to figure out what to do next. Well. We didn't have to do, thank God, we didn't have to do anything next. And we were one of the few people who did not lose our electricity. And I, I was so grateful because almost everybody in our town lost electricity. Even this morning it was still out when my husband went by. And, you know, that's when it's that hot and that humid, I can't breathe in that weather. So that would not have been good. Um, but we were spared. And let me tell you, I was I was praying pretty hard last night because I was really nervous about that happening. So, <clears throat> anyway, the, the, the end of the story is I'm here. Thank God I'm okay. We did not get hardly any damage in our yard. I, I wouldn't have believed it. <clears throat> but apparently there's a lot of damage all over our town. And they did show the, uh, the, the, the hook the hook, whatever it's called, on the map, on, uh, I believe it was on Facebook, my daughter saw it, she said, Mom, they had, you had two tornadoes in your town, I said, oh, okay, well, we're still here, we're all good, but that was that, so I'm a little slap happy today, because I didn't get hardly any sleep at all, but I'm still moving along, all right, so, here it is. <clears throat> this is for my great, my grandson-in-law. Now I will water this and keep it moist. Being careful not to overwater because I don't want to rot the stem. But these roots that are on these leaves have to stay moist. I'm probably going to move this into an area where I'm going to be able to keep a close eye on it. And I think for now I'm just going to, let me see. Set him over there. And this will be fine, right? She's going to get thicker and fuller, and eventually I'm hoping she'll be in a big 12 inch pot and just all in her glory. In the meantime, like I said, this plant is, uh, she's very, very easy. Very easy. And rewarding. Okay. Now. This I showed you already. 
heard what's in there. And look at that. Okay. And let's see how she's doing. This is my Peperomia obtusifolia. Oh, yeah. This plant, by the way, roots very, very <coughs> easily in any rooting medium. They have all rooted, I believe. Okay. So, I am going to take all of these out of here. And it's not necessary to get all of the uh, perlite off of there. It does not hurt the plant to leave it on there when you <coughs> repot it. In fact, I think the less you mess with the roots at this point, the better. And one more. Okay, so let's put I think I put a little too much perlite in here to begin with, but I don't want to mess with that now. So I'm going to put everything that I want to rip back in here. Whoops, nope, not that one. This is going to go in here. I'm going to set that in there. All right. We'll put this one in here. Now let's. I'll show you one once again how I did this. I'm cutting this almost in half, giving the bottom half a little bit more leaf than the top because she's got the stem. But I'm going to cut back on that stem. And I'm going to stick her in here. And Same with this one. Remember the cut end is what has to go down. And I probably should have watered this a little bit more before I did this. But I can water it after. It doesn't matter. 
This one I'm just going to put the whole thing in. And you can do it that way too. The whole leaf with the stem. Like I said, these are very easy to root. So. Okay. That should be good. Gonna give it a little water carefully so I don't and it's okay not to if you don't get it exactly even all the way around because it's gonna be in the dome and it will eventually it'll soak it up all the way around in here. Now I don't have this I'm Put her on more on the angle. I don't have this um, airtight. That's probably important to, to note here. And I do that on purpose because I don't want to get a ch take a chance on getting mold. So there she is, my plant pie. And you can see how. She's just sitting on top. So basically, the cover is helping to keep some of the moisture in, but it's still getting some fresh air. And you really need that with this plant because you don't want to end up with a uh, rot. Okay. Oh, I have two more here. Oh, these are the ones. Okay. <clears throat> I think I'm just going to put those in a separate pot. because there's really not enough room in the in the pot that we just used. Yeah, this is for those of you that keep telling me you like my long videos, this is for you. Okay. I might put these in a different pot altogether. Yeah, maybe I'll put them in here. Okay. We'll do it this way. Remember these got the roots coming out from underneath. So we'll see how this goes. Oops. 
Okay. Now I want to put these in separate little pots for now. <coughs> these plants really do like to be ripped down too, so um, once they get to that point, their growth just goes crazy. Oh, and, and in between all those warnings and siren, sirens, right after my phone and my husband's phone went off and told us to take cover, the TV went out. Ugh. So that was unnerving. I thought, oh, great. Now I don't know what's going on. And it took about 10 minutes for it to come back. I went in my office and I turned that TV on and it worked. So I don't know what that was all about, but... Maybe the lightning, I don't know. I don't know, it was weird. They're all hooked up to the same company, so that didn't make sense to me. <coughs> and then my daughter was texting me because she lives not too far from me, and it hit her first. And, oh, and there were sirens going off all over the place outside, both by my daughter and by us here. So, yeah, it was quite a, it was quite a night. And she has a two-story, and they sleep on the second floor. And I had told her earlier in the evening, you might want to make sure your car is in the garage, nothing that can fly around on their patio, make sure it's in the garage. And uh, you might want to sleep on the first floor today because she's got a hide -a bed in her living room, and I said, might not be a bad idea. Because it's a lot harder to get from the second floor to the basement in a hurry than it is from the first. So, all right, we're gonna put these two in here. Well, I should probably put. Uh, let's see, how many do we have? One, two, three. One, two, three. And an extra. I'm going to put three. I'll put three in each pot. Yeah, so she was texting me, are you okay, Mom? Is your electric on? Please let me know if your electric goes out. I'll come and get you and bring you to my house. It's just such a good egg. And I'm the whole time I'm thinking I hope her electric is on. Yeah, yeah. And then the siren stopped. And my husband said, well, I got an hour left to sleep. I should probably go back to bed. I said, yeah. And no sooner did he say that, and the sirens went on again. So I turned the TV back up, and they said, nope, take cover. Tornado. In well, it, it was it was right here. I don't know where it was. I haven't. I can't drive, so I can't go around and look. But that was right here. So that was. And then my daughter said, "We're in the basement, and the sirens are going off like crazy, Mom. I don't know what to do." I said, "Just sit tight. Cover your head with whatever you got. Get under something sturdy and sit tight." So she did, and her daughter and her and her kitty. Oh. <clears throat> that was exciting. An exciting night, but I don't want to repeat that tonight because I, I really need to get some sleep.
really like this plant. It's another easy, easy one that gives me so much pleasure. It's pretty, isn't it? The variegated leaves and they just don't take much. Um, this is a plant that can really be neglected and still not die on you. And it's nice to have a few of those, isn't it? Okay. For those of you that have stuck with me through the whole video, I really appreciate you guys. It's nice to know that you're interested in what I have to say and do. I'm <clears throat> I know I'm not the most exciting YouTube video in town, but I don't want to be somebody I'm not. And Really, I truly just enjoy working with my plants and sharing it with my plant friends. I'm not trying to be the best YouTuber in town. So if you're one of those people who enjoy watching, I want to thank you again for, for coming by because you helped me, you helped my life. It's nice to know that someone is out there. And I get so many nice compliments, compliments from people. My goodness, sound like I'm drunk, don't I? <laughs> I can't talk today, I'm so tired. Okay. That's alright, this too shall pass. But yeah, I, <clears throat> I live in a very... Uh, sheltered world right now and I'm not used to that. I was a real estate broker for many many years so I was always out and about. I was always around people. So this is quite a change for me so I I really really appreciate you guys more than you probably will ever know. You know, I'm not even going to put that in there because that looks like it had s some kind of issue. So we're going to just get rid of that one. Okay. <clears throat> That's it. We're done. And I need to take a break. So I am going to uh, let this be the end here. Okay. I'm not going to I'm not going to come back. I'm just going to let you see what we did here and it's going to take me a while to clean up this mess. But we did quite a bit, didn't we? We got a whole new tray going here. And we've got new, new cuttings going in here and in here. And these. And the mother plant that started it all. All right. Well, I hope you all have a good evening. Coming up on another weekend here, and today is uh, Thursday. Yep. 
so and hopefully we won't have any more of that uh, crazy weather for a while anyway it's supposed to cool off here tomorrow I can't wait mid mid down for 70s that's gonna feel like a middle of winter after the heat that we've been dealing with so oh I can't wait all right my friends thank you again don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to. You don't have to. It does help me if you do. So, And um, also if you share. My, my daughter told me to remind you guys you can share this to your social media. Your Facebook or Twitter or whatever. And that helps me too. It helps me to get more viewers. So if you so choose to do that, I appreciate it. And I thank you. Otherwise, I will see you again soon, and we have lots more to do. In the meantime, you all take care, be safe, and thank you again. Bye now.